Hi there, so thanks for joining me today. Uh, the town that you can see behind me is Biddeford, which is in North Devon, and uh, I'm fortunate enough to live here. So what I'm gonna do today is just have a little walk around and uh, tell you about some of the history of the place. And it's just gonna be, uh, a, you know, like a brief history. It's, it's not a real in-depth thing, so just general. But uh, hopefully even if people that live here don't know much about the area, uh, you might find some interesting facts about the place. It's got a lot of interest in history. So we'll have a walk down into town and see what we can find. So let's get going. Biddeford is a town on the Torridge River in North Devon that is said to date back to Roman times. The name Biddeford means by the ford, suggesting the town grew up around a ford across the river Torridge. The town was recorded in the Doomsday Book of 1086. It is said to have been held first by Saxon nobleman Britric and then by William the Conqueror's wife, Queen Matilda. By the 13th century, Biddeford was Britain's third largest port. It became a thriving port in the 17th century due to the transatlantic trading boom. It became a popular port for wool and pottery merchants, which were sent in exchange for tobacco and sugar. Although trading expanded, wars between France and the American War of Independence meant that trading ceased forever. The Grenville family played a major role in Biddeford's development and they helped transform the town from a small fishing port into a busy trading port by developing shipping tires with the American colonies and the import of tobacco. They were lords of the manor until 1711 when they voluntarily gave that title to the town council that they had founded. A well-known feature of the town is the Long Bridge. It was first built as a timber bridge in 1286 but was replaced in 1474 by the masonry bridge that stands today. You may notice that the 24 arches are of varying sizes. It is said that they are like this as they were paid for by local businessmen with the larger arches reflecting the more generous contributions. Although there are no records to verify this version of events. If you cross over the Long Bridge to east the water, you will find Chudley Fort. It was constructed by parliamentary forces in 1642 during the Civil War to defend Biddeford, and it consisted of 14 gun ports. It was stormed and taken by the Royalists, and after the Civil War it was abandoned. In 1921 it was bought by public subscription and is now a public park in memory of those who fell in the First World War. Another well-known feature of Biddeford is the Royal Hotel. It was built in 1688 for John Davy, who was a local tobacco merchant, and it was then named Colonial House. It was sold in 1748, where it had a few residential owners, and from 1850 onwards passed through several businesses. It first acted as a workhouse before becoming a courthouse in 1830. The prison cells can be found behind the hotel ballroom. These cells would later be used to house convicts awaiting transportation to Australia. This is also the place that Charles Kingsley wrote part of his book, Westwood Ho, where shortly after the nearby town was named in honour. The Church of St Mary is the Anglican parish church of Biddeford. Built in 1865, it replaced a Norman church of 1260 which in turn was built on the site of a Saxon church of Cobb and Wattle, which was standing at the time of the Norman Conquest. The tower is from 1260 and is all that remains of the original building. The Biddeford Railway was opened on the 2nd of November 1855. Ten years later it was taken over by the London and South Western Railway. Regular passenger trains were stopped in October 1965, although some trains still used the line until it was closed in 1982. The site is currently open to the public and has a visitor centre and cafe. One of the more darker happenings in Biddeford came in 1682, when three local women were accused of witchcraft. 
Temperance Lloyd, Mary Trembles and Susanna Edwards were tried at the Assizes at Rogemont Castle in Exeter. Despite their probable innocence, all three women were hanged. It is said that they were the last witches to be hanged in England. Biddeford today is still a thriving community, although much changed from its old seafaring trade days. But the future of Biddeford can be seen today with the redevelopment of Brunswick Wharf. But hidden in plain sight, a lot of its old architecture still remains, and not given a second glance or thought by most people of the history it holds. <laughs>